so have there been, you know, credible threats made specifically regarding uh, our capital in Sacramento? Yeah, so that, that's a two-edged uh, two sword, so to speak. So there, there have not been uh, specific credible threats against the capital in Sacramento. Um, if, if there had been, it would be, I guess, easier in a sense to you know, assess it in terms of how credible it was and, and then intervene. Um, but there are general threats. And so there's been quite a bit of chatter throughout the country uh, with regards to threats against the US Capitol, continuing threats, and then threats against the 50 states and their state capitals, Sacramento being one of them. And so there's a lot of uh, discussion out there, uh, a lot of referencing to uh, showing up at the Capitol, and there's been some uh, reference to quote unquote storming the capitals uh, to include Sacramento, but nothing that's specific and that we would deem at least at this point credible only because we don't have specificity with it. Um, I know uh, the governor has called in the National Guard. We also have our state police, the CHP. Um, so is the FBI, though, taking the lead role in terms of um, planning for this and, and protecting against this? Well, we're, we're one of the agencies. So uh, the CHP uh, is instrumental in having the, uh, the responsibility for securing the Capitol and, and, the, and the state Capitol grounds, uh, the governor's office, the, you know, the state assembly and, and Senate and whatnot. I mean, they are very much in the forefront uh, of, of guarding uh, those, those physical buildings and the people within them. Um, California Office of Emergency Services is also instrumental in coordination in coordinating that protection and in coordinating threats that may occur within the state, uh, and then of course other other local agencies as well, SAC PD and and the Sacramento Sheriff's Office, in terms of the capital, uh, and then but the FBI we are uh, we are a partner with them and we are joining forces with them and resources. Uh, and we are sharing information that we get uh, and we are taking information that they give to us literally throughout the day, every day. Um, so among, uh, in, included in all of that, I'm sure is possibly investigating any people who uh, from California, uh, from your region that may have, you know, suspected of being mm -hmm. associated with the riot that happened at the nation's capital um, and or any of the, any of the threats that may be out there right now? Yes, good question. So, um, as you know, the events from last week where the nation's capital was attacked and there was violence and, and various criminal activity that occurred, are, we have a Washington, D.C. field office, uh, which is responsible for actually conducting that investigation. Uh, and so they are working very hard, literally around the clock, 24-7, uh, to identify any individuals that were responsible for that that violence or that criminal activity at the nation's capital last Wednesday. Um, as they develop information and as they identify people that were responsible, uh, they'll be building investigations up to determine whether, whether uh, they broke the law and what laws they broke. Uh, and as they do that, they'll, they have been sending leads out to the various FBI field offices. And so there's 56 field offices across the country and Sacramento is one of them. And we've all gotten leads We've all gotten uh, tips to follow up on, leads to follow up on, investigation to conduct in furtherance of that main investigation back in, in Washington, D.C. Um, there have also been reports of both U.S. military and law enforcement uh, members being at or near the riot at our nation's capital. Um, how are you or how are officers and National Guardsmen being vetted uh, ahead of uh, the upcoming inaugural um, security efforts. Sure. So all law enforcement, all military, uh, guardsmen, everyone are, are vetted, so to speak, to a certain degree, right? And you're vetted to a degree depending upon what your position is. Uh, but all people in trusted positions uh, of, of responsibility and authority for the government are going to be vetted. There's going to be backgrounds done. Uh, and not only initial backgrounds, but there's continuing uh, backgrounds as you uh, progress through your career in a particular agency. Um, and there's checks that are put in place. And so uh, all that is done con continually. Um, and of course, the higher position you're in, the more vetting is done. And the more sensitive position you have, the more vetting is done. 
So that is done. Um, have you ever experienced this uh, type of, of threat, if you will, um, you know, capitals across the country? Um, have you ever experienced anything like this, that what's happening right now in your career? That's a, that's a, that's a good question, right? Uh, I don't think so. Be honest with you, right? We, the FBI, we are involved in some very uh, sophisticated, important, significant investigations all over the world, um, and and all of them are somewhat unique depending upon the situation. Uh, but this is unique. I think the times that we're living in are are unique, and so uh, the threats that we face and the concerns we have, uh, I think for this time, uh, are are unique as well. And so. Um, yeah, that's how I would answer that one. But we are uh, we are addressing those threats and we're taking them extremely seriously. And all, for example, the threats that are going on right now and the, the potential threats of violence to the state capitals, additional threats to the U.S. Capitol, that's our number one priority right now. I mean, as an agency, we are all hands on deck and top priority, without a doubt, to keep people safe. Um, are there concerns over other uh, federal buildings, the state buildings uh, in Northern California. I mean, in, in our, you know, farther Northern California, we have, you know, IRS, we've got National Forest Service, um, uh, Social Security. Are there any indication that, that any of those uh, buildings or operations might be targeted? There's no specific credible threats that we know about to those particular agencies or those particular buildings, uh, but, but, but we all have to be very cognizant that those threats could exist uh, or they could arise. Uh, and so uh, folks that work for uh, state agencies, for federal agencies, uh, need to be cognizant of what's in their, in their area, uh, their surroundings, and, and everyone needs to be cognizant of what's going on in their surroundings. And so it's something that we have to be, we have to prepare for, we have to prepare for contingencies of that regard, but there's no specific uh, threats that we know about right now. Um, so what would you put out to that, you know, average uh, citizen who's listening right now and we're all feeling the stress, the anxiety, and even if, you know, I have no plans to be anywhere near the state capitol uh, over the next few days, I mean, what is it that you want to put out to people right now? Yep, no, thank you for allowing me to do that. I, I want to let the public know that the FBI, our federal partners, all of our state and local partners, uh, we work hand in hand every day. It doesn't, not just now, I mean, 365 days a year, we are partnering with each other. We're on task forces together. Uh, we work ad hoc uh, together in terms of investigations and working groups, share information continually. So we all, when, when the need arises, uh, we come together with all our tools and resources, and that's what we're doing right now. And so we are coordinating daily. We're going to have a command post. Actually, we do have a command post up and up and running right now in our Sacramento FBI office. And we've got our partners with us in, in the command post so that we can share information real time. And then that information gets to all of the agencies as, as required and as needed so that they can actually action it and make sure that they're keeping people safe. So I think it's, in, it's just imperative that the that the public know and feel confident that law enforcement is coming together on this particular threat stream uh, and that our main goal is to prevent violence and to prevent any harm to, to the public. That's our number one goal. We want to prevent it from happening. Uh, and if it does happen, uh, then, then we want to get in and mitigate it as quickly as possible and stop it from continuing. So that's, that's what I want the public to really know. And second, if you would, if they could please, uh, the public is our partners. They're our partners in all this. If they could please continue to provide us with information of any, any concerns they have, any threats they're hearing about, uh, anything they're seeing that, that is suspicious or uh, they think might lead to violence or some sort of criminal activity, if they can share that information, we rely on that. That was gonna be my next question. How do they share, who do they call if they say, you know, my neighbor, my brother-in-law, or whomever, if they become aware of somebody they believe is, you know, likely to pose a threat, who, how do they go about contacting? Yep. So if it's an immediate threat and it's like it's going to happen, you know, in a minute or two, call, I mean, call 911, right? The local police, get them out there very quickly. Uh, if, it, if it's not immediate, they can call the FBI and they can contact is either anonymously uh, or they can they can identify themselves but they can either call our 
direct line to our office, which is 916-746-7000. That's our Sacramento field office. They can go to online at tips.fbi.gov, which is an online uh, location that handle tips. Uh, again, they can do it anonymously, or they can call a general 1-800 number, which is 1-800-CALL-FBI, and they can report tips there as well. And uh, we'll, take, we'll take the tips any way we can get them. Well, I think we're all interested in, in seeing a safe transition and, and into uh, this really disturbing behavior that we're seeing. So that's some really good advice. Is there anything we haven't touched on that you uh, feel is important to add? Oh, yeah, Gina was just mentioning to me. So I, I do want I want people to understand, I think it's important for people to understand that um, we tread and, and, and we walk a balancing act between the First Amendment and criminal activity, right? We, we, we want everybody to know that they have the right to, to free speech. They have the right to express themselves verbally and writing. They have a right to express their, their ideas, their political ideology. Uh, I mean, really anything other than threatening somebody directly, right? We, we, we uh, cherish those rights that are enshrined in our constitution. It's when people cross that line to actually start uh, wanting to use violence to promote their their ideas or violence to promote their ideology. That's where it crosses away from protected rights to being uh, to being criminality and, and a criminal violation where you're going to get investigated by the authorities, whether it be the federal or state and local authorities. But but uh, but law enforcement is um, very cognizant of those of those rights, and we all we all uh, we all um, cherish them, and we all uh, want to have those rights personally, and so uh, and so people should feel comfortable that they can speak their minds. Just don't don't do violence. Right, right. Well, I think we've covered the mic questions, and um, I just really want to thank you for taking time out to uh, speak with us today. Yes, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Take right. care. Good luck in the days ahead. All right, thank you. <laughs>